Good afternoon, everyone. Thank you so much for joining us for our student success workshop on the information technology program. I'm Nashe Brown, and I serve as coordinator in the Office of Student Affairs at the Metro Campus. And I'm joined today by Melissa Swafford, manager of our Transfer Resource Center at the Metro Campus, as well as Dean Chuck Dole uh, for the Information Technology Department. So I'm going to go ahead and turn it over to Melissa so that she can go ahead and tell you all about IT. Okay, thanks, Mache. We're going to start off talking about the Transfer Center, um, and this is going to lead into a bigger discussion about uh, the different IT programs that are going on. Um, get our presentation up and we'll go to our next slide um, and just kind of introduce you to our transfer team college-wide, our small but mighty team, um, and just tell you a little bit about the services that we do provide. Um, so we can help a student regardless of where you are in your um, academic career. We start with prospective students all the way through alumni. We help you explore any of those pathways or partnerships that we have with four year schools and how you can leverage those um, in your transfer. We help with all the research that goes into looking at different schools, different academic programs and searching for scholarships. Um, so whether you know exactly where you wanna transfer or you're not sure at all, um, we can help you. We look at schools in the state of Ohio, outside, um, and as well as out of the country. So we can help you kind of connect with those different institutions. Connection is a big part of what we do, um, and that might be to admissions reps, transfer advisors, uh, campus visits, virtual visits. It's about getting to know your transfer destinations and what your options are. Um, we help with that application. So if you're um, working through your application process, you can do that one on one with us, be either virtual or in person, especially as it relates to some uh, applications to selective schools um, that are a little bit more in depth that you might need greater support in. Um, we provide overall transfer planning um, assistance. So if it touches transfer, has that in it, or is related to transfer, we'll help you. Um, so, you know, transcripts, whatever it may be, we'll make sure you understand how um, that goes into your process. We also host both virtual and in-person um, events at Tri-C. This includes transfer fairs. Um, our next one's coming up on Wednesday, October 20th. It's a big virtual uh, transfer fair for the whole state of Ohio. Um, and we have over 61 schools that are looking forward to connecting with our students. Um, we usually have campus tours where we go out to our different four year partners so our students can visit with their peers from Tri-C. One of my favorite um, and one of the most important kind of uh, services we provide is external advising. And external advising is where Tri-C students have the opportunity to meet one on one with transfer advisors from four year schools. And the transfer advisor provides um, an idea of how Tri-C classes that you have taken already or plan to take will transfer into the program that you are looking at. And it's really helpful for students to understand how those credits transfer, what their pathway looks like after transfer, um, so you can figure out what's going to be the best transfer uh, destination for you. So next up on our next slide, um, I wanted to talk a little bit about transfer must do's. Things that um, if you are even thinking about transfer, I want you to kind of think through these. So first and most importantly, when you're meeting with your academic counselor, please let them know that you either plan to transfer or are thinking about it in the future. Um, and this is really important because it will help them understand what academic pathway you need to be on at Tri-C. That's gonna set you up for success at Tri-C, as well as when you transfer. So I always say, every time you see your counselor, if you're not seeing the same one, make sure that they know, you know, I'm gonna transfer. It's an important conversation to have. Second, connect with the transfer center early. We can support you from the very beginning of your journey. We can provide you resources and help you do research that will help not only you, but your counselor prepare 
um, your academic plan. Um, knowing your major definitely helps, um, but if you don't know your major, but you know what general area of study um, and some of the schools, or even if you don't know what school, we can help help with that. Um, a great way, place to start if you don't know where to start is our transfer partnerships and our website is on here. Those aren't the only things that are available to you though. Students transfer to all different types of institutions all the time, but we want you to get started early. It gives us plenty of time to plan and it makes sure that your academic plan match your transfer plan. And that kind of leads to number three, that TRI-C offers a variety of different types of degrees. Um, the two that are designed for transfer, meaning that they include general education requirements um, that are going to transfer directly to a four-year school, um, are the Associate of Arts and the Associate of Science. Um, within those, you can take specific coursework that would go toward a field of study. So with information technology, um, if you're looking for, you know, a specific area of study, you know, you, you can apply some of that coursework, you can take some IT classes um, that will go towards those degrees as well. Um, so those are what we consider our design for transfer degrees. Um, we also have the Associate of Applied Business and the Associate of Applied Science degrees. And while those degrees are ne not necessarily designed for transfer, we do have select pathways that are available for those majors for transfer purposes. Um, and so, you know, it's, I, I always say that there's no reason to pick one, it, like to go with the Associate of Science. Um, if you want to go straight to work, if you want to get the applied degree, and that's kind of your goal at first, you should focus on that, but have that conversation. Have those conversations with your counselor, with your faculty, with Chuck about like, here's my, here's what I want to do um, in information technology. What degree is best for me now? Um, and, you know, you can have that conversation. In the transfer center, we are not experts on any specific area of study. Um, so if you you're not sure which you want to do, we're going to definitely refer you back to a counselor and to the experts, the faculty in that field. Um, and so we just want to make sure that your academic plans match your transfer plans. So those are all really important conversations to be having, and those are the tra transfer must do's. So I'd like to talk a little bit about transfer partnerships. There's lots of options out there. We have over 30 plus partners, partner schools, um, and those include a variety of different types of partnership and each one is unique. And what I like to tell students is you don't need to navigate this process by yourself. That is why we are here to assist you. Um, we want it to be as streamlined and as easy as possible, but sometimes if you try to do it on your own, you're going to miss something. Um, so connect with us early. These partnerships, they help you save time and money. Um, and that's why we built them. And that's why the four year school um, has come on board with doing them. We have some specific programs that are what we call dual admission. And these are programs that allow you to be admitted at both schools. And people are like, well, why would I want to do that? I, you know, I'm going to finish at Tri C and then I'll apply. And that is perfectly fine traditional transfer. Dual admission allows you access to resources at that four-year school. A lot of the programs allow you to have commu ongoing communications with transfer representatives, um, an advisor in your select major or program at that four-year school, and so you can benefit from those services while you are taking classes at Tri-C. Some of our dual admission programs also include dual enrollment. So you can take classes at both institutions at the same time. Um, so the, that if your transfer destination has one of those programs, we'll talk to you about, you know, is this a good fit for you? Because they're not a good fit for everybody. Um, but sometimes it makes sense to get started in those programs. I always tell students that we are very lucky that we live in Ohio because Ohio cares about transfer. Um, and so as a potential transfer student, um, you definitely benefit from a number of statewide guarantees. Um, something we call Ohio Guaranteed Transfer Pathways. Um, and then something called Ohio Transfer 36. And this is just a set of general education requirements um, that if you're pursuing either the Associate of Arts the Associate of Science, 
that are built in. And these are a set of gen eds that are recognized across the, the board at public schools in the state of Ohio. And beyond that, we have other specific coursework, which have something called transfer assurance guides or tag classes. You don't have to worry about which ones they are, but just know that um, there are courses that are built into our transfer pathways that are tagged, meaning that if you take it at Tri-C and it's in the um, degree program at the four-year school, that class that you took at Tri-C is guaranteed to transfer into that program. Um, so we have a lot of resources out there. Or the website for partnerships is linked here at the bottom. We encourage you to check them out. I did want to talk about a specific partnership um, that we're very excited about called the Future Vikings Program. This is our partnership with Cleveland State. Um, we just announced last week. And really what we're doing is any student that's at Tri-C who wants to go to Cleveland State is a future Viking because sometime in the future, they will be going to CSU. So we have lots of partnership and transfer pathways with CSU, including degree link and dual admission. But this program is just an overarching program that if you wanna be a future Viking, we will communicate with you and get you connected um, to CSU. So some of the benefits of this program is direct access, not only to the transfer centers here at Tri-C, but to CSU, um, a stronger connection to faculty advisors, as well as academic support services at Cleveland State. Uh, we are working to connect you with academic colleges at Cleveland State while you're still here at Tri-C. Um, the advising that you um, get both here at Tri-C and CSU, um, and then one of the other um, really important things of this is you will get priority consideration for transfer scholarships at CSU. So CSU does um, award transfer scholarships. Unfortunately, not every student who's eligible is able to get one because there's there's only so much money in that bucket. Um, and so we we are happy to announce that if a student participates in future Vikings, they will get priority um, for those scholarships. So. With all that information, like I said, we're really excited to get started on this and, you know, kind of pull together all of these students that come to Tri-C that want to be future Vikings. So if you are interested, email futurevikings at tri-c.edu um, and we'll communicate with you. You're going to see lots of communications coming up soon, but our kickoff event is scheduled for October 21st. Um, so we're looking forward to working with all those future Vikings out there. So, given a pretty robust uh, overview of the transfer centers and transfer planning, I did want to highlight, and I, I know um, Chuck will also highlight some of the opportunities that are, are, that are out there for NIT. Um, so, this is just a snapshot. This is not the only ways you can transfer NIT or computer computer science, but it gives you an idea of some of the actual pathways that we have um, that are out there. So Bald Wallace, Cleveland State, I do want to take a few minutes to, to highlight Case Western Reserve University's partnership we have. Um, it's called a STEM project, and this is really a dual enrollment program where while you're at Tri-C, you have the opportunity to take coursework at Case Western Reserve. This is a selective program um, that we work with students that want to, you know, major in some STEM field. So we definitely see students in the computer science area. Um, luckily, Case Western Reserve, even though they are a private school, take many of our IT classes um, towards their degree in computer science. So if, if Case Western is something you're interested in, we're happy to talk to you about what makes you eligible for that program. So, um, and then we also have a variety of programs that um, are available from the AAB and IT, um, some cyber security, Western Governors University has a variety, too many for me to list right here. Uh, and so I, they're from various um, degrees in um, IT to various other ones. So, and really the sky's the limit. This is just a start. These are where we have identified pathways, but the coursework, we work with many other schools to take our coursework as well. Okay. And our last slide here, now hopefully we piqued your interest if you're planning to transfer, and I really want to highly encourage you to schedule an appointment with the Transfer Center. 
Um, it's really easy. Just go onto our website and click the button that schedule says schedule an appointment and you can schedule online with us and we do appointments via phone, WebEx or in person at our campuses um, and we can just get started. And the earlier start, you better is the earlier you start the better. Yes. And then knowing that course registration will start again in October, um, it would be really good to make sure that your academic plan aligns with your transfer plan. So we look forward to working with you and we do work clo closely with Chuck Dole. Um, if I have students who aren't really sure what they want in IT long term, we refer out all the time uh, to have those important conversations. So we look forward to working with you. Thank you. I think that's it. Yes, yeah, so we will now turn it over to Dean Chuck Dole for his portion of the presentation. Um, and it looks like we actually have one question before we do turn it over. So Eric says, what can IT help you with if you're interested in being in the program? Can IT help you with if you're not sure on that. What do you mean by that, Eric? Because IT is a program. Mm -hmm. You can go a number of different directions, including game design. So what exactly are you looking at to do? So we'll give Eric a few moments to think about that and answer his question in the chat. And while he does that, we'll go ahead and let you get started, um, Dean Dole. Nisha, can you mute me, please? Yes. Thank you. <laughs> yeah. Should be seeing my screen now, correct, Nisha? Thank you. Thank you, Nache. Thank you, Melissa. That was a great presentation of the transfer center. Uh, the reason I always like to see Melissa go first, other than knowing everything about transfer, is a lot of people don't realize that IT programs transfer. Sometimes when people think about IT, they think of the old days when we actually used to fix computers, and we really don't do much of that anymore. So uh, the really great news, so when she ended with Cleveland State, Cleveland State's been a great transfer partner for Tri-C for a lot of years, especially for IT students. So let's talk about a few things that have to do with language. A lot of times you'll hear the term computer science or software engineering and think, well, there's nothing at Tri-C for me that's going to help me transfer. Well, that would be incorrect. What we're really looking at at Tri-C are our programming and development courses, and you heard Melissa talked about the AA and AS transfers. The main programming classes in the AAB and the AAS degrees for IT programming and development all fit into those transfer programs and they fit very nicely. So when you're looking at getting into a field and that field might be computer science, we're the perfect place to start because we have all the classes you'll need. We have the counselors that understand what classes you'll need for a particular school. And as you saw on Melissa's slide, we have a lot of these agreements in place. So let's go to my website, which is where I'm at right now. Now, there's a couple of things on here that you might find interesting. Um, first of all, let's share. We got some students in the news that we try to keep up with. Uh, some of these folks recently, like Sam, uh, even during COVID, was able to get a job working remote desktop support. And now with Endpoint Solutions, our other friend, Sam Predates, actually was working on starting his own company. So there's a lot of folks that are doing a lot of good things with IT. We like to break it down on the credit side from software development, networking, cybersecurity. And then we also, some of these others are non-credit programs, so or post-degree certificates. We also, if you're not sure what you want to do with IT, we've got a couple of quizzes here that might help you. So if you go into the first one, it's a quiz on software development. You've got some questions here. Once you answer, you'll get 
some response as to whether this might be the best field for you. There's one on computer networking as well. And if you complete the quiz, we'll get your information. We'll reach out. We'll try to set something up to help you think through whatever it is you might want to get into. So you'll notice here the first one called software development. As we get into there, what you're going to see here is a mix of credit and non-credit programs. This is a non-credit program. Cleveland Codes is a boot camp program. The lowest cost programming boot camp you'll find in town, by the way. So when you talk about computer science, it's a very similar path to what we're looking at here. Go ahead and click that video and start it running. And what you'll see with the program guide is a lot of classes that, you know, you don't want to talk about all those right now, but I want to key in on a few that are going to transfer, like an IT 1025, IT 1050 for programmers. Those transfer just about anywhere in the state of Ohio, along with 1150, 2650, 2700. So you can get the 21 hours you need for transfer when you talk with your counselor on a transfer program. And even if your software design goals end up being game design, while we have a two year degree, we also have a two year transfer program with Shawnee State University, which is one of the premier game design schools in the country. So here you see everything we have. Let's go back. So back button right. Pretty amazing when you're an IT person, right? We just added a new program we call quality assurance. And the reason for that is a lot of times when students go through the programming and development AAB degree, so that's these classes here, what you're going to find in the field of computer science and software engineering, uh, if math is a challenge for you, like it was for me, I mean, when I was in high school, I didn't have any ambitions for college. I just wanted to get out of school, buy a house, have a few kids, and you know, hang out with my friends for the rest of my life. And I did all that by the time I was 19 and couldn't afford to support the kids. Uh, I did not do well in math. I worked really hard to get to the bottom of my class and I was very successful at it in high school. So for me, when I got to college and I had to take math, it was uh, pretty scary. I actually took a midterm one time and all I saw was a white sheet of paper because I was so nervous about the test. So uh, when, you, when you look at folks like me that have fancy letters behind their name, don't think we didn't have some of the same challenges you might have as you think through a program. But when you start thinking about computer science, that is almost always four year requirement at uh, most jobs. So for example, Progressive Insurance, Highland Software, they're going to want a four year degree in computer science or software engineering. The major difference, and you'll see this if you look, the major difference between a transfer degree and an applied program it's going to be math and in computer science, it's a chemistry class. Almost every university in the country wants calculus one and calculus two for a computer science program. And there's just no way around it. Uh, like I said, I graduated the bottom of my, the bottom third actually of my high school graduating class. And I had to take calculus. Sometimes when we face the challenge, you face the wall, you find out there's all kinds of help there. And one of the great things about doing your first two years of Tri-C, there is a lot more help at Tri-C than you might find at a university for those programs. So one of the things I always recommend, any student thinking about computer science or software engineering, take your first two years here because you're going to get some classes where you're gonna be able to get one-to-one -one attention. You've got tutoring, you've got smart thinking, you've got all kinds of resources that you may or may not have if you end up going to university right off the bat. Now, we also, as I mentioned, have a new program of quality assurance. What's quality assurance? Well, these are the folks that test the code that the computer science folks write. Uh, this is a field that's actually branching into automation as well as the, the way we used to do it, where it's hands-on testing. We do both in this program. The reason we added this as a specialty to programming and development is a lot of times when you get done with a two year degree, even if you're getting ready to go on for the four, a lot of the jobs that are open for a two year programmer are in QA, quality assurance. It happens so often we just say QA. 
So when you when you're looking at that, don't be surprised if after a two year AAB degree or even your transfer degree, if you had to start working, if work was was an important part for you, you're going to find a lot of QA jobs open. Uh, are there people with the AAB that go right into programming? Absolutely. I have one now that uh, hasn't finished his degree yet. He's working at Sherwin Williams supervising the cybersecurity automation team. Uh, he comes to class, he goes out and works, he quits work, he comes back to class, he goes out, especially gifted programmer. That's not all of us. That's not me. So uh, you will see people like that. You will see people that go take a boot camp and they can find incredible success with that. Is that 90% of the people? Probably not. It's a very small subset. Some other programs we have, if you're looking for something short term, we have a web application and development. Some people might refer to that as front end development. So if you've heard the ten term front end development, you might be looking at our web app development. Why do we call that front end? Well, front end is everything you see. Funny thing about IT, it's a lot like accounting. We use big fancy words and it really means something really, really simple, right? So front end is everything you see. And what you're looking at here is web programming, Java programming. These are all the things that create the content you see on a website. So it, it's a very applicable program to what's going on in the area. If you know anything about web design, you know if you're not learning JavaScript, you're not working in web design. We have a mobile app, which is still front end development. Some of the same classes when we get into here is iOS and Android mobile app development. So developing apps is something of interest to you. You also get some of these certificates as you're working on the degree automatically. Now, let's back up a minute. We talked a bit about software and uh, Nashe or Melissa, if you see a question, because I'll just keep talking right over people. Oh, yes. So we do have a couple of questions. I was going to wait till the end, but I can Go ahead. let me get them out. since you paused. Okay. So Eric has um, put in the chat that one, he wanted to know where to go to access the quiz again um, so that he can figure out what he might be interested in in IT. And you see, uh, if, you, if you go into the Tri C website, just type in IT. Go to information technology programs. It's right there in the middle of the page. Both of them are right there. And there's your address right at the top. Okay. Let me see if I can, Eric, put that in the chat. Edu slash programs slash information technology slash index okay so eric i have put that in the chat for you so in case you just need to copy paste it you can from there while we're in the session and then the other question was just being curious, and I think that was before the quiz came up, but being curious um, as to which, what kind of jobs um, he can get in IT, what, what can the IT program, what kind of skills, he said, what kind of skills will the IT program provide him? He's about to go in the networking. We do, so we do software development networking and cybersecurity, as well as project management, which we call business solutions. Uh, what I wanted to show you is type of jobs. What I don't like to do is tell you anything. I'd rather show you where to get the information because you should always be able to find information about things yourself. So if you go to our website, go down the bottom, you're going to find additional information on every program. It talks about transfer, internships, and you get here, if you want to know what type of jobs there are, this comes from the US Bureau of Labor. And so this is not information that I'm putting out there. This is information that comes directly from an outside source. So you'll find some, and they're going to tell you what degree is required. You're going to see a lot of these for, uh, for anything computer science or software related. They're going to talk about a four-year degree. 
I would tell you that on anything that says networking, that's not necessarily true, and I'll explain why in a minute. In fact, we have a uh, networking student that graduated with networking software degree, went to Sherwin Williams, and now he is the senior networking engineer down at Highland Software and has not advanced beyond his two year degree. So that's a different story for networking. Okay. I'll show you why. Get out of this. So you'll find that on everyone. Let, let's jump over to networking. Software. So now we're going to go into computer networking. Probably asking why is networking different? The first thing you should always ask yourself when you're talking and when you're talking, thinking about IT is don't go to the program that pays the most money. It's not going to work. Go to the program you're most interested in. So, for example, it happens all the time. Some somebody's hanging out at Crocker Park when Highland Software folks are working. They're coming in at 10 a.m. on a Monday morning in sandals and short pants, and everybody says, "Wow, I want to work there." And they find out about you know their foosball table and their fire pole, the slide that goes from the second floor to the first. And they say, "What a fun place!" What they don't realize is those folks are probably working seven days a week, 10, 12 hours a day. That's why they're in their sandals because they're not quite sure where they're at at the moment. But it, it it is, you know, don't go after something from what you see, go after something by what you like. The easiest way to make one of those determinations, if you've never played with any code at all, not even something as simple as web code, HTML is really simple. I mean, there's, there's 144 tags in all of HTML, and then we just have variations. But if you've never done that, there's a good chance anything in software design is going to be a challenge because it requires a certain amount of creative contribution as you're working with it. Networking, on the other hand, is very compliance driven. And in, in networking, what we find are there are industry standards that companies will hire to. So for example, the big buzzword in networking is a company called CompTIA, C-O-M-P capital T-I-A. CompTIA has a whole bunch of certifications. What industry certifications, not certificates, industry certifications are, it's a test you take to say you have a certain body of knowledge that meets a broad industry credential. Our networking hardware and networking software program teaches the curriculum for four, five, sometimes six of these credentials. So let's go into networking hardware. Networking hardware is probably the more difficult because that one gets into the Cisco program. Ask what is Cisco? One of these ridiculous things. You have Cisco technology, probably. It's in your phone. If you got a ticket on 77 or 480, I buy a camera. That was probably Cisco technology. ODOT uses it. It's everywhere. It's another type of server and software that's used in business. Most businesses have several. So there's never, you know, one thing people start thinking about when they they think, oh, I, I want to learn about Microsoft. No one company has all one technology. Here at Tri-C, we use Microsoft, Oracle, we have Cisco Techs, we even get into Unix. So we have all four, sometimes five branches, depending on what technology is being used. You'll find that in every company. They're not going to have just one type of operating system application. In networking, we use a lot of acronyms. So if I accidentally slip and say OS or iOS or things like that, raise your hand, have Nasha or Melissa yell at me. This is the program that we call, it's actually, I call this the paragraph degree because the name is so incredibly long, but it's actually in networking hardware. The beauty of this program is when you take, let's see, EET 1015, 1035, 1055, that is the exact curriculum used for the A plus certification. Now that's an additional test. You would take it at our certified testing center for an additional fee, but you get a 50% off voucher from your faculty. Moving on, this next class here, ITNT 2300, that's the networking plus certification class. And let's see if we added ITNT 2370 is network security. Why did I highlight those three? Go into Indeed or Monster, or any of the job search boards, 
look for a desktop support technician or an endpoint solutions specialist, you're going to find a lot of times they're looking for A plus, network plus, and security plus. Those of us that know what they are, rattle those off so quick. We say A plus, net plus, secure plus. We know what they are. Uh, they're in high demand and they make you even more employable. This program adds Cisco 1, 2, and 3. That is Cisco's CCNA or Cisco Certified Network Associate certification. So we have A plus, net plus, security plus, Cisco. Let me see if that's all of them. I don't think Linux is in this one. It's not. So this degree, rather than just give you a set of classes, gives you classes that lead to industry certifications in field. A plus alone can make you employable. What you're getting is you're getting nothing but classes that are going to lead to certification. <clears throat> you may not be able to take the test at this time, but you'll have the material. Uh, do these classes transfer? A lot of these classes transfer because universities also teach networking curriculum that aligns with industry certification. So the Cisco, the A+, Network+, plus, Security+, plus, you're going to find those transferred to just about any university that teaches that program. Now, Cisco is a tough class. There's just no way around it. The beauty of this program, let's say you're a person that says, that's great, but I need a job right now. We have what are called stackable certificates. I want to make sure you understand the difference between a certificate and a certification other than ION. A certification is something that's done outside of Tri-C by another organization. We facilitate that through our testing center at the Metro campus. A certificate is something Tri-C awards based upon completing a certain amount of credit. So let's talk for a minute about the Cisco short-term certificate, because this stacks right in. So if you were talking to your counselor and said, you know, I, I, I wanna get into IT networking, but I, I need to work really quick. This is a certificate you can get in about seven to eight months. What you'll find is every class here also applies to the degree. So you don't, if your eventual goal is to get a degree, starting out with a short-term certificate, doesn't slow you down on that path because all of these classes are part of the degree. The great part about networking hardware, after Cisco, there's yet another certificate called a one-year certificate. So one of two things happen, either you get these one at a time, or when you graduate with your degree, you find out you also had two additional certificates with that. It's a pretty cool program. The only difference I think you take on the IT support professional, is Linux in here? No, it's not, so good. So let's switch, so those stack, they also stack into what we call networking software. The only difference between networking software and networking hardware, if you are not interested in going the Cisco path, then you go networking software. There are, believe it or not, companies hire both. So when you're looking at a large company, companies you wouldn't think that had Cisco techs like Cross Country Mortgage, they have an entire Cisco department, plus they have a desktop networking department. You can't cross into Cisco unless you're Cisco certified, but they still have a need for techs that do network support. Here's something that a lot of people don't realize. You know, uh, every other week I get a call, somebody wants to go into networking because they like to fix computers. Nobody fixes computers anymore. Even here at Tri-C, your computer breaks, they're bringing you another computer, you log in, you download all your programs, you get back to work. That's pretty much the rule of most companies. You know, some people still like to play with boxes at home, but you don't even find large computer boxes at companies anymore. The CPUs have gotten smaller, boxes, the parts, and the word you're probably waiting to hear, everything's going to the cloud. All the cloud is, is a server that sits in another location. But when a company uses cloud-based technologies, they don't need to have a computer that you fix on your desk because the price of that computer just came way down. So network people, 
actually becoming programmers to a certain degree because they're learning languages that are going to help them move data as well as secure data. That's why in your networking programs, you see this class, IT 1050. If you were watching, you say, wait a minute, that class is in the programming degree. You would be correct. It's also here because at times you may need to use a language called C-sharp, or maybe you need to learn another C family language like Python or, or something like that. You're going to need to move data. You might need it to secure data. You're going to get all of that here. So you're also, this one is going to give you some interesting options. Really cool class called Scripting Fundamentals for Cybersecurity. Here's another buzzword. I'm giving you all sorts of secret words here. You should be writing them down. Uh, when you talk to cybersecurity people, they don't use the word programming. Guess what word they use? You win, scripting. So when they talk scripting fundamentals, they're talking about writing code scripts, JavaScript, Python script, things like that, different scripts that are going to help a person protect the system. The cool thing about this degree is a lot of people have been getting hired into cybersecurity positions with this networking software degree. Sharon Williams has hired several of our students with this degree. Done internships, at the end of their internship, which they call an apprenticeship, they do a presentation. And if they do a good presentation, they get a really great job that can set them up for the rest of their life. So this is a very good program. The big difference with this one, you're going to get into Linux, some people call it Linux because the man that created Linux was Linus Torvald. So you either say Linux or Linux. Um, this also ties to a certification. This ties to CompTIA's Linux Plus. Everything in CompTIA is a plus. Maybe that's why they do that. You have some of the same other certifications here. You have the A plus curriculum. You have the networking plus. You have network security. You have Linux. I think this one actually has five because if you took the uh, cyber two cybersecurity courses, that actually sets you up for certified ethical hacker. Speaking of cybersecurity, we have a very fast growing cybersecurity program as well. Uh, a little note, bragging commercial. Uh, several years ago, when we were still on campus before COVID. We put a team in the National Collegiate Cyber Defense Competition, which is a nationwide competition of uh, mostly universities and some community colleges where they compete all day long. It's an eight hour competition on Saturday. And they, it's a real situation where you're, you know, you got red, blue and white teams. And the goal is to beat, to come out ahead, to win the competition. Uh, our team at Tri-C won the competition back in 2018. We beat Baldwin Wallace, we beat Tiffin, we beat every university in Ohio that was in the competition and our students went to Chicago to compete. Fortunately, only four of them could go and most teams are 10 or more. We didn't win the regional, but we do have the plaque for winning Ohio and knocking Baldwin Wallace out of there for a year. So our cybersecurity program is a very good program. Uh, if you're a student that happens to have an associate degree in this today, post degree certificates are a possibility. If not, please ignore those. Let's talk about the cybersecurity degree. This is an AAB. Recall the slide that Melissa showed. There's a brand new program with Franklin University that transfers your AAB of cybersecurity to a four year degree. Really cool thing about uh, Franklin University is I believe they're a Department of Defense authorized school on their cybersecurity curriculum. It's one of the leading cybersecurity curriculums in the state. What's the difference in cybersecurity, you might ask? Well, it's going to be a mix of programming and it's going to be very heavy on networking. You really can't protect the network till you understand the network, right? Where it differs is pretty much in the second year. You're going to get into more classes scripting. You're going to get into advanced topics and network security. Uh, you're going to pick a couple of electives. Ethical hacking. In cybersecurity, hacking is not a bad word. You hack to try to be able to prevent people from hacking into your system. So what you're going to get is some classes here, and all three of them would be great classes to take, but you know, intrusion detection, 
digital forensics. Down the road, you're going to see that we're, we'll be developing a cyber crime program. That's not out yet. We just started working on that with the public safety folks here at Tri-C, but you can get introduced to that. You'll also notice here that you have two Cisco classes. Take one more, you have all the curriculum you need for the Cisco CCNA. You have some of the same certifications. Um, yeah, there it is. Network Plus, you've got uh, Security Plus, you have Linux Plus, take one more Cisco class, you have Cisco CCNA. That is a powerful program. And as I said, don't take my word for it. What you wanna do is you wanna get into these programs. Look at that. One place I was gonna go look for dollars and it's not there. Uh, you wanna get in and do some checking yourself. Let me, let me just show you something. See if, see if I can get it to work. Is this the official site? That's one of those, boy, I hate those top answer sites. This is gonna give me emails all day long. Are you still seeing my, Melissa, could you shake your head? Okay, good. So I said some words to you. Let's go into desktop, desktop support technician, find jobs in Cleveland. What do we have? Well, here we go. We got a desktop support technician, help desk technician. Let's just, okay, no, continuous chunk. So what are they looking for? Job descriptions, benefits. Okay, since this is help desk, they're probably not looking for any certifications on that. Let's go up to where the desktop. Now see, you're going to see this when you start doing job searches. Bachelor says preferred doesn't mean required. Preferred is two years. Well, look at that right there. That is exactly what I just said. That's A plus. That's a, that's the certification. We do it with three classes on any number of those degrees. And we go down here to required skills. They want the actual certification. They want a plus certification to be a desktop support technician. The reason I wanted to take you here is I'm not making these things up, but I think since I'm not going to pay your bills when you get your degree, if you don't happen to get the job, I say, I wanted you to see it for yourself. Go in there and look so that you know when somebody gives you advice, you're getting good advice, and that is in fact something you'll find out there. Oh, well, look at that, 5G installation tech. That's interesting. Uh, I mentioned Cisco. So let's go back and see what happens if I just type in Cisco. Cisco. And see, I'm not the brightest person, so I just type things into search engines and I have the, have the computer do the work for me. Oh, look at that. I type in Cisco, I get a cybersecurity sales specialist. That didn't give me much. Uh, let's try Cisco Network. Oh, here we go. Here's a uh, Cisco Network Engineer in Brexville. Let's have some fun, see what it looks like. What do they want? Well, they want a bachelor's degree or the ever important word or Equivalent of five years experience. Now look at the certifications. There's the CCNA I told you about. Now these others are advanced certifications, okay? So these things are there. Some people just want a CCNA. What do these folks want? Oh, see, look. Associate's degree. Associate's degree, do they also want a CCNA for this job? I didn't see, and there's your salary, 66 to, that's not bad. Yeah, I should look at that. I was looking for other certifications there, but I think what I wanted you to see real briefly was when we talk about these industry certs, we're not making this up. This is, these are things that are actually out there that you will find companies require, which is why we put them in the program. So when you go through any of these programs, like computer networking, like software, or cybersecurity, it was there, we had it back here, or cybersecurity, these certifications are important now. 
your question might be, how much do they cost? Well, the Cisco test is almost $500. You can get a 50% off voucher from your instructor for every certification test you would want to take. That takes that price down in half. Sometimes it takes two takes because these are not an easy test. And the reason they're not easy is because every three years, you're going to have to do something to recertify. The reason you do that is you assure the industry that you're keeping up on your skills. So if I hire you and you have an A plus, that's valid, which means it's within three years or you renewed it for another three. That means you have a skill set. So you might be asking, well, why get a degree then? The degree gives me that added part that I might be able not only to do the work, but maybe I've taken enough classes that I also know how to communicate. Maybe I have to write an analysis or a report. Uh, I actually did this work when I was in Chicago. And I've built a few large databases. And if all you think there is to networking or even software is just writing code or building networks or connecting things up. It's not really the case because what you end up doing a lot of times. Especially for a programmer, a programmer gets done and a programmer is going to do programmers notes, right? So that the next person knows what was written, how to fix it, how to advance it. Networking folks write tech reports. There's other things that uh, you get in a degree that are going to help you as you advance in a field. But as I said, the networking side is attractive to you. There are people that get a job with just a Cisco CCNA, that short term certificate. The reason is. At times, companies have a big need. And for a company that has Cisco equipment to maintain their warranties, they need to have only Cisco techs that are certified by Cisco's training standard to work on those machines. So you'll find Cisco jobs usually pay a little, a little higher with just a CCNA and a, without a degree. I can give you a range, I know for a fact, uh, the bottom being 40,000, the top being 76. You know, the education just helps. No matter what you might be hearing about quick programs and, and boot camps and everything else, when you look long term, it's the folks with the degree that end up being able to navigate when change comes up. You know, you could do a boot camp or a quick turnaround certificate or something like that, and all of a sudden everything changes, and you either have to go back to school to pick up more skills. Whereas with a degree, you're going to get more of a breadth exposure to what's going on either in software or in networking or in cybersecurity. As things change, you're going to be better prepared for what direction an industry may go. I'll give you a good example. A couple of years ago, everyone was talking about blockchain, right? Had a big conference in Cleveland. I got blockchain certified. Uh, now you're not hearing about it as much because blockchain's pretty much become some of the database structures that people are using right now. What was so unique about blockchain had more to do with the security. What was so similar to everything else is a lot of times they were using Python code, which is what we use for other databases. But, you know, if blockchain came around, you and I got trained just to do blockchain, and now companies are moving and starting to think about quantum computing, you know, you're going to be lost if all you do is blockchain because quantum computing is a whole new set of guidelines on programming. It's actually going to create a whole new field in cybersecurity. They call it, bless you, Melissa, they call it quantum cryptography, if that's not a difficult word to say. And the problem with quantum computing, even though IBM is building a center down in uh, University Circle, just a heads up, is that moves so fast. And when you get new technology that moves really fast, you get bad actors that can move really fast too. So before anybody's going to adopt quantum anything, they got to make sure they can protect it because the pace that you'll be able to do is really fast. I see Nache showing up. Does that mean my time is up? If you have any questions, uh, you can find me all over the website. Just drop me an email, more than happy to help. Uh, we have offices at Metro. I'm there every Wednesday. We're at West, uh, we're at East every Tuesday. You can always find us. 
Thank you very much to Dean Dull as well as to Melissa Swaffer. We appreciate your presentations today. Um, I'm not seeing any other questions in the chat, so I think we're good. And we just want to thank um, our attendees for joining us today and for their participation. And everyone have a great day. Thank you.